Hi, my name is Joseph Berger. I am the Associate Vice President Marketing for Marvell. And today I'm presenting for the OAF on the deployment of 400ZR and the ongoing 800 gig coherent project. First, a quick introduction of the OAF. The OAF identifies industry needs for which it develops implementation agreements and then validating that work with interoperability demonstrations. The OAF has been around for 22 years and has 120 member companies. Uh, they created 80 implementation agreements so far, as well as 42 interop demos. Today, I'll talk about the optical track, specifically the 400ZR and 800G projects, but there's a wide range of activities, including co-packaged optics, protocol management, including coherent CMITs, which is also used in the 400ZR products, uh, electrical interface track that works on common electrical interfaces, and networking track. The OIF has a wide range of membership that brings in new projects with expertise in many different areas. The OIF is organized in a range of working groups inside the technical committee that work on specs and therefore the implementation agreements, which in turn lead to interoperability demos. Additionally, we have the market awareness and education committee which creates educational workshops and presentations. A quick refresher on 400ZR. We started the project in 2016 and published the implementation agreement in March 2020. The goal was to enable a cost-effective, low-power 400G single-carrier coherent interface. There are two application modes. First, the 120 kilometer amplified noise limited DWDM link. And second, we also defined a spec for an unamplified loss limited case. The amplified DCI use case is by far the most popular and widely used application. Uh, you can see in the basic 400ZR configuration in, in this diagram here, um, there's a switch to switch connection via an optical line system, including MUX and DMUX and amplifiers. Um, and there's up to 120 kilometers of fiber. Uh, this is defined then with a minimum of minus 10 dBm output power on the transmitter and uh, 26 dB receiver OSNR performance. 400ZR integrates the functionality of a coherent DCI system into a QSFP DD transceiver, offering tremendous cost and power savings. The goal was to fit a coherent transceiver in the power envelope and size of a 400G short reach module. This allows switch and router companies to offer the same density for both coherent DWDM and client optics in the same chassis. But even more importantly, for the end user, this eliminates an entire layer of the network by connecting DWDM directly from the data center switches without the need for an additional DCI box. The block diagram on this slide shows the components required to accomplish these goals. So at the core, you have a low power uh, seven nanometer DSP. We spent a lot of time and effort in the OIF to define interoperable specs, including the framing and the CFEC forward error correction. Of course, you need uh, 60 gigabaud drivers, TIAs, the silicon photonics, uh, and the optical integration required to fit all this in a, in a small form factor pluggable. In addition, uh, modules include an industry standard CMOS software interface, 
that enables full performance monitoring directly from the module via the switch. So no more custom vendor dependent uh, monitoring software. Now, with all of these advantages, of course, uh, there's huge demand for 400ZR. Uh, you can see uh, some of the highlights of an OIF survey on the right side of the slide. Uh, we had responses from 17 of the largest carriers and cloud service providers, and 80% of them replied that they intend to deploy 400ZR. Uh, volume shipments started this year and, and will grow dramatically. Um, in, in this market study you see here by Signal AI, uh, they show uh, the, the growth of 400ZR ports and uh, the expected market of hundreds of thousands of modules over the next few years. Uh, 400ZR Plus, which you see also mentioned in the survey on the right, is not on OIF standard, but there is nevertheless interest in uh, longer reaches without giving up some of the advantages of, of 400ZR for some use cases. Now, this slide is showing the Marvel Colors 2 uh, 400ZR ZR Plus module, uh, which we announced commercial availability for earlier this year. Uh, we've successfully completed interoperability testing with other vendors in the OIF defined 400ZR mode, which is a validation of the great work in the OIF over the last few years. Uh, at at Marvell specifically, we additionally also completed a lot of integration testing uh, with switch OEMs and ODMs, as well as different line systems. And on the top left, you can see an example of a fully loaded 32 port QSFP DD switch. Uh, we, we also introduced a ZR Plus variant. Uh, you can see on the right side, a picture here of a demo we did earlier this year. And this version features a longer reach and better OSNR performance. Uh, these transceivers, of course, uh, feature tunable lasers, and most applications use a 75 gigahertz channel spacing, so you can fit 64 channels in the C-band, uh, or that translates to 25.6T per fiber. Of course, with the success and starting deployments of 400ZR, the question is, what's next? Uh, in, in this uh, OAF network operator survey, 88% uh, responded that they will need something faster than 400G coherent by 2025. And 60% uh, are planning to deploy 800 gig router ports after 400 gig. So in November last year, we kicked off the 800 gig coherent project with the goal to define interoperable cost-effective single Lambda 800 gig coherent interfaces. Again, for small form factor pluggables. Um, again, there are two use cases being discussed, 800 ZR for DCI applications and 800 LR for campus links. 800ZR is a single span amplified link with uh, loss up to 24 dB. Link model um, here includes a booster amplifier on the transmitter side and the preamp on the receiver. And then the unamplified link has uh, no MUX DMUX losses, but of course um, the loss details are crucial and drive the technical um, decisions related to the optical power, ROSNR, uh, reach, FEC choice, and so on. Some key 800ZR specs that the group agreed on um, so far are shown here in comparison to 400ZR. The symbol rate will be doubled compared to 400ZR to 120 gigahertz, uh, still using DP QAM16 modulation. 
800 uh, ZR supports 32 channels at 150 gigahertz spacing. And uh, the FEC is not decided yet, uh, but it's uh, going to be 15% overhead and frame format and pilot overhead and so on are, are still under discussion as well. This shows a slide uh, presented by Google in OAF uh, that emphasizes the need for low cost, uh, high bandwidth intra-campus connectivity. There are obviously different ways uh, to achieve this. Um, for 800 LR specifically, the goal is um, again to get to low cost and low power. And, and that's, of course, driving the decisions in, in these OIF discussions, um, including low-cost lasers and, and simpler specs. Uh, 800LR will support unamplified links uh, up to 60B loss, uh, the C-band uh, to, to allow the use of readily available amplifiers if a customer application needs that. And uh, the goal is low power, low latency, and obviously an interoperable uh, specification. And um, for the uh, forward error correction, um, 800LR will have a different uh, FEC than 800ZR with focus on low latency and low complexity, and of course, focus on power. Uh, there are two primary approaches, the concatenated approach without termination at the host uh, KP4 FEC and the conventional terminated approach, the former promises lower latency and lower complexity. The latter is uh, more useful for better performance, but at a slightly higher power. So these trade-offs are currently being discussed within the study group. So I'll close with my opening slide. There are a lot of exciting projects in the OF, including this 400 uh, and 800 gig project, the co-packaged optics, um, but many more. Uh, we're, we're a member-driven organization, so we invite you all to join uh, the discussion and lead the next generation of optical networking technologies. Thank you.